Mr. Pyle, who was the person who actually invented steel pan? By coincidence. By a coincidence. It just happened. And I could go further to tell you that. Anyone who tried to claim he had invented the steel pan out of context, no one person could take claim that they invented the pan. Because during the period of 1935, it was still bamboo. During the carnival period, it just didn't disappear. Right? And within a coincidence, during that time, the guys from Gonzales used to be beating the tambour bamboo band. And at the same time, in the yard that they was practicing, was a yard they used to call Tanti Billy Yard. It had an old chassis, car chassis there. And while they beating the bamboo, a guy used to be knocking it, knocking the chassis with that song. And by a coincidence, on a boxing day, one of the guys beating the bamboo split. And in the heat of this rhythm, he wanted something to beat. Tuti Wilson was his name, the Wilson Brothers. And he just dashed around the corner, looking for something to, you wait a minute, man, you want something to buy. He pick up a pain pan, and he start beating this pain pan. The others hearing this song, more melodious than the bamboo pulling on the streets. They all discard them, and they all run for, who could have got dustbins, take dustbins, who could have got old utensils, take utensils. And there and then, that was the dustbin bar. It wasn't steel barn. The name steel barn wasn't given to it. It was the dustbin barns. But the typical West Indian is a copycat. A group of fellows only want to hear something and see something. And every man from east, west, north and south just disregard bamboo and went to pan. Because, of course, there were poor fellows in Nagato. They couldn't buy drums in, in those days. So anybody who has a wash tub or a drum used to steal the drum. You understand? So eventually, this set a revolution for this new invention of the steel man. Biscuit drums. In those days, we had the biscuit company. They lost a lot of biscuit drums. So eventually, they then dropped off from the paint pan, dropped off from the biscuit drums, and eventually they went full-fledged into the 45-gallon drums, oil drums, because war had declared in 1939. So Trinidad had its last carnival. Then a construction battalion came from the United States to build a base down at Chagaramas. And of course, the country was poor. And the American came into the country, and money started spinning. Prostitution was rampant. When the, when, when the government had proclaimed the proclamation, no carnival from 1940, this didn't stop the steel band man. There, then, that made the steel band develop more. During, they hadn't the chance then to parade the streets as they liked. They then take for the bed of the river, the dry river, east dry river, the dry river bed there. They then start beating the pan and playing the, 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 the instrument on the bed of the river because they know the police is not coming there. In BJDB, victory over Japan, every steel pan from all part of Trinidad and Tobago to the streets. And it was, I can assure you, it was no more the pain pan. The barn that took to the street was in full force with 45 gallon pans. As the prostitutes, as we may call them, was on the move, they also had a protector. He had been a person that connected to a steel band. Clashes start happening, riots. 
No, right was when the steel banner sort of, sort of people put him in. It was areas. And let us say, if she did belongs to the behind the bridge, or she did belongs to St. James, and she going out. And the only time they could really get at who they want, within that period, this carnival, 